So this whole story of this codex is what not to do for a codex, in my opinion. Now, this is not a terrible codex. The whole thing is not garbage. More or less, a lot of it is kind of the same from what it was in Legions and Agash. As far as stats and stuff, I'm not really going to get into that because that's more of a codex review and I'm really not that concerned with stats and whatnot. Um, most of the units are more or less the same exact thing that they were before with like the same save and the same number of attacks and all that. A couple of them dropped one ability to gain another ability and that's kind of kind of a wash, like whatever. Um, this book, the main problem I have with it is number one, this is like a poor man's Cities of Sigmar. And the reason why I say that is that Cities of Sigmar, as I'm sure you know, is a soup codex. It's designed that you, you can have your dwarves and your elves and your humans and all fight together under the same city. And this is essentially what this book is as well, which, you know, by definition, a soup codex is not a bad thing. So, you know, don't lose any sleep over that. But the difference is, is that Cities of Sigmar actually has a lot of specialization that you can do with it. You could go all dwarves if you wanted, and there are multiple units of dwarves. You could go all elves, and there are multiple units of elves. Now, with some exceptions, like the assassins, whatever they're called, the one with the hero that is an assassin, all he has is Dark Riders and himself. That's it. And that's their whole little mini faction there. A couple of those are very scant. But the humans have a huge section, the elves have a huge section, and the dwarves have a sizable section. The point is, is that if you are interested in soup, that's totally fine, and that's totally fine in this book, Soul Blight Gravelords, as well. But the difference is, is if you wanted to use the Cities of Sigmar book, which is here's how I usually play it, is I want to have a theme for my army. So I'm going to take all of just human units or I'm going to take all just elf units, or I'm going to do whatever like that. And I find that if you think about like a, the depth of each faction inside of Cities of Sigmar, there is quite a bit of depth. I mean, obviously humans, I think, are the largest faction, and then elves would be the second largest, but they have a lot of depth in options for each thing if Cities of Sigmar... And I find that to be a far better book than this for choice. One of my chief complaints about this Soul Blight Gravelords Codex is that there is tons of choice in unit options. It is a soup codex, but the depth is so shallow, you better not dive in it because you are going to be wheelchair round or dead. The, like, for instance, let's say I want to go all vampires, all right? I have about eight vampire options and then blood knights. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess to stretch that out, I'll include vampires and bats. All right. Well, then that should be a size of army. I've got about eight vampire characters, blood knights, vargeists, and fell bats. Oh, okay. They even took out the bat swarms, which is one of my favorite units. They took out bat swarms out of this from Legions of Nagash, and that's going to lead into something in the future. But I'm going to I'm going to hold off on that thought. Um, um, if you want to just do wolves, that's totally fine. What do we have for that? Well, um, we have Rudicar the Wolf, and we have Rudicar the Beast. You can't take them at the same time because one is the empowered version and one is the normal dude version. All right, that's fine. Um, there's another issue I'm going to touch on in just a second about Rudicar the Wolf, but what can you normally take in this army if you're just going to do wolves? Just stick with wolves, man, because the vampires and the bats only have so many options. Let's do the wolves. What do you have? Well, I'm looking through the book. I'm sure I'm going to get to the wolves here soon. Um, oh, dire wolves. So if I want to do a whole wolf army, I can take Rudicar and dire wolves. Wow, that is that is some serious depth here. Okay, you know what? Screw that. Screw vampires and screw wolves, okay? I just want to go skellies. That's what I want to do. So, what do I have for skeleton options? Oh, well, I got two characters. I got Black Knights, which was an existing unit. Grave Guard, which is an existing unit. And then regular Death Rattle Skeletons, an existing unit. 
So you're telling me if I want to go all skeletons, I've got two heroes, one cavalry, two infantry. Well, I guess it's better than wolves. I mean, it's not it's not great, but I guess it's better than wolves. Um, I hope it's abundantly clear that this is a problem that all of the options are so shallow. So being that the options are all so shallow, it forces you to take soup, which is, I mean, fine, sure, but it's really not what I wanted to do. And I'm not just salty because, oh, this codex isn't what I hoped it would be. I mean, I'm disappointed for sure, but I'm not going to whine just because a codex is not to my liking. My problem is, is this codex comes off as not really anything in particular. You know, you go play Bone Reapers, right? You're going to have a bunch of Bone Reapers on the field. You play Cities of Sigmar. You're going to have, you know, a bunch of different people on the field, but you could have all the same people, all humans, all dwarves, all elves on the field. Um, you're going to play Chaos Space Marines, and you're either going to have demons or humans, but it's all in the same vein, the same theme. I don't really feel that with this codex. I just feel like it's kind of a smattering of different undead things, and... Apparently the lore still supports the fact that basically a vampire is the head of the whole army and that's that But I feel like it's such a missed opportunity Especially when they remade the skeletons they remade the zombies and all of that I feel like this was a real opportunity to add some vampire units in the game But wait a second. They just made new vampire units. Oh, yeah, remember uh, cursed city had those vampires that I was talking about that I loved so much, the Var Vircos Bloodborne. Remember those glass cannon people? Well, they're in this book. Fantastic. Okay, well, I can take them as a unit. That's that's really awesome. You flip in the back of the book, and for no apparent reason, they have taken every single one of the units that were in Cursed City. They've put them in this book, but you cannot take them individually. You can only take them as a 755 point cluster, almost like a detachment or a war scroll battalion. And th if they were all themed the same way, then I would be all for it. Let's say that everything that came in Cursed City was all wolves or it was all vampires or it was all one thing. You know what? That's totally fine. That's totally fine. But no, um... Let me tell you what's in this. If you For your 755 points, now I'm not saying it's not worth the points, but what I'm saying is there's no direction, which is what I find this whole book to be. It, ha it lacks direction. So, Rudikar the wolf, which is the human form, not the beast form of him, uh, he is in the Cursed City box, so you get him, which means you can't take the beast form of him. Then you've got Gorslav the Gravekeeper. Oh my god, that's an awesome model. I love it so much. But he's got to be taken in this giant unit. And, oh wow, he actually supports Deadwalkers, the zombies. So he would be awesome if you wanted to take an all-zombie list with a Necromancer and Gorslav the Gravekeeper and zombies and a corpse cart. Oh, but you can only take him with all of these other people for 755 points. Okay, I guess. Whatever. Um, here's Torgilius the Chamberlain, right? He's basically just a regular wizard. He actually doesn't really support anything in particular. Um, he supports Rudikar the wolf, actually. But that's about it. So he's like a lieutenant model. Okay, that's boring. Here's the Vircos the Bloodborne. These three models, the vampires that are on the pillars, right? And, I mean, they're moderately okay for as far as a unit. But you can't take them as a separate unit. You have to include them in this giant group. So, here's an elite vampire unit, I finally got my wish that wasn't Blood Knights, and I have a 755 point tax attached to him. Okay. Hey, wow, here's a named, here's a named skeleton lord, right? A skeleton white king. That's awesome. Watch Captain Halgrim. Oh, yeah, I can't take this with my all skeleton army because he's part of this giant group. Okay. Oh, here we are, the Vargiskir, right? The big... Vargolf looking monster remember that thing that was awesome a big feral bat looking werewolf thing yeah that's really neat he's actually got some pretty neat abilities and he's kind of a tank but I can't take him in my bat army or my wolf army because he's part of this giant detachment hey look Rudikar has 
uh, bodyguards. That's really cool. You could include these bodyguards in your wolf army. Oh no, the wolf. Oh no, these guards are just still part of that giant group. Wow. To be honest with you, I think they really screwed the pooch on this codex. This is a messy, uh, directionless gaggle of units. And sure, you can make some units, uh, some lists of just one thing like skeletons. It's going to be a really boring list and you're going to have to max out on three of each unit or whatever, but you can do it. But I just find that it doesn't have nearly the legs as far as replayability and diversity and change and all that. And so something else that bothers me about this is I feel another way that they've dropped the ball in this codex is that they just introduced in this codex a vampire called the Rat Prince or something like that, right? A named character, a unique named character, and his whole motif is rats. His name is Kritza the Rat Prince. Okay, that's really cool. So we're going to have some rats or something, right? Oh, you would think that because Cursed City actually came with swarms of rats. Rat swarms. That's really neat. So you know that you can theme an army with a bunch of rat swarms and Kritza because he's the Rat Prince, right? No, no, no. The rat swarms are not even in this book, despite them putting the research and the money and the production into making these rat swarms for Cursed City. I guess they had no intention of actually making them units in the the Soul Blight book. But why did you even bother to put the Rat Prince in here? Why did you even bother to design this character if rats are going to be playing no part in your codex? And do you remember the thing I mentioned earlier, how I used to love bat swarms? I loved them. I had a whole bat army, actually. Well, bat swarms are not in this codex, and you're thinking, oh, because they're going to, okay, they're just trying to phase out the really old models, because fell bats got new models, blood knights and zombies and the skeletons, they all got new models, so you, they just really don't want those ugly old bat swarms in the book, I totally understand. Wait a second, Cursed City just came with bat swarm models, brand new bat swarm models, along with the rat swarm models, and neither of those are in this book. It's, it's almost like they intentionally wanted to have an extremely shallow book. And to be honest with you, I mean, a lot of these units can put in some work and a lot of neat synergies and all that. It's not a terrible book, but I feel like this book is not up to the level of polish and production value that we've seen a lot of times. Now, of course, the images are beautiful. The writing's beautiful. The book is gorgeous. I mean... The actual physical production quality of this is great, but I feel like this is really a lot of ideas and many of them go nowhere. And I don't know why that is. If you're going to design all these new models and put them into production just for some board game, wouldn't it make a ton more sense to do what you often do and sell models individually? Like with Blackstone Fortress for 40k. They did that with the man of iron and the all those things they even have points and stuff for the characters and whatnot um you can play those things in 40k as individual units they may not be good or whatever but you could theme an army with them but here they make a board game and they make all new models for it and then they don't take the opportunity to put the new models in the new book even though you've got a rat prince and you just made rat swarms but please don't put the rat swarms in here. I don't know, man. I am I am pretty, pretty irritated with this book. Anyway, sorry if this was super negative, but I uh, just had to get this off my chest. Thank you to GameAt.eu for supporting the show, and thank you to my beautiful, sexy, good-smelling Patreon patrons, and I will see you next week.